Hey guys, um, <clears throat> my name is Andrew Machado. Um, for a lot of you that know me, obviously, since I'll be sharing this to Facebook, and I know pretty much everybody on there. Um, currently I'm in Japan. Uh, this is my third trip here. And I had informed a lot of you that I would be starting to do um, vlogs. Uh, similar to what I did last year, um, if you go on my Facebook and you go through my timeline of my Japan trip last year, I did kind of these on the goes and and, um, and kind of ripped off some content form from other YouTubers just as like a joke um, or kind of like satire, uh, if you will. Um, but this time it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I want to start doing these end of the day um, kind of ruminations, meditations, um, kind of free, free flow but semi-structured um, discussions on not only like my day so that some of you can come along with me like you did last year um, but also as a way I think to try and engage more people in discussion in contemplation in kind of expanding people's understanding and um, knowledge about Japan about me um, you know about the world at large hopefully um, because I think that some of the things that I want to talk about, some of the things that are important to me, and some of the things that I'm going to pr try and question and, and not necessarily answer, but certainly kind of come into question and, and think about and examine are um, things that are much uh, deeper than just Japanese-ness, um, you know, American-ness, and, and ideas of kind of like cultural identity and such. I mean, there's certainly a lot wrapped up in that, but I think there's more of a, sorry, there's this giant uh, German shepherd that's chasing school children. It's gonna mess up. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I certainly think that there's these things that are uh, much larger than just the surface level, like, um, yeah, identities that we have uh, tied to us just because of our, you know, outside appearance or, or nationality or ethnicity or whatever. Um, so I do want to say it is March 19th. Nope, sorry. March 18th. Or maybe my phone or laptop didn't update. I'm trying to do like a million things at one time, so I apologize. Um, I'm pretty sure it's March 19th here. It is uh, Sunday, uh, 10 a.m., a brisk 48 degrees in Osaka, Japan. Um, I am currently on the rooftop of my hostel videotaping these because not only is the weather beautiful, it gets me outside, it kind of gets me into the sun, um, and uh, gets me kind of woken up and, and motivated to get going. Um, first of all, I want to say yesterday was my first full day in Japan. I left on Thursday, uh, March 16th. I arrived at uh, two no one fifty p.m. March seventeenth in Haneda, Japan. After a, about sixteen no fifteen hours of travel from Tampa to Minnesota, Minnesota to Haneda, Tokyo. Um, when I landed, I had to wait about thirty minutes to get my bag. <laughs> um, Haneda was a little bit different than Narita Airport, which is the other large airport in Tokyo, um, and so I wasn't wasn't familiar with it yet but I mean it's not too bad it's smaller so there's not as much to it not it's a little bit bigger a little bit more vast um, but I think it for me it ran more efficiently the two times I've been there um, so I kind of had to wait around and then I got through customs headed for the train or well head, headed for JR got my pass and I headed for the train and I have multiple um, transfers and train hops to get to the destination where I am in Tabushi, Tabushi Jomae, um, Osaka, Japan, where I'm staying at my hostel. Uh, I got lost because the address wasn't right in maps, so I didn't actually get into my hostel till probably 10 p.m. Uh, then I didn't sleep until 1.30 a.m., having only gotten 30 minutes of sleep on the plane. And then um, woke up at 3.30 to see messages from my friends uh, and family, you know, in Japan. And that woke me up, so I stayed up another, you know, three or four hours. Fell back asleep for 30 minutes and then got up and, and it was Saturday. 
at that point I had to get ready to meet my friend Ko because uh, a bunch of my friends from the Kakahashi project were graduating. Now for those of you who don't know, my uh, this is my third trip to Japan. My first trip was part of a ex joint exchange program called the Kakahashi Project. Through the Kakahashi Project, um, I was chosen as one of the 23 representatives for the University of South Florida uh, be through the Japanese language program to represent uh, not only our school, but our country, and of course, I mean, when you look at it yourselves and your family, uh, to bring a, uh, you know, kind of open mind to learning about Japan, uh, learning about new cultures, seeing new things, and meeting new people. Through the Kakashi Project, I met the group of people that I consider some of my dearest friends in the world. Um, and I keep saying friends, and I'll get to that in a little bit, because to me they're more like family, um, and I'll explain why uh, in a little bit. But for, for me, uh, the Kakahashi Project changed a lot uh, about my life. I was a very different person uh, what, before I went on that trip. And then when I returned, I made a huge amount of life changes to get to the point where I'm at now on my third trip. But the Kakahashi Project basically was a way of building bridges to connect uh, America and Japan. But through that, I think it has created uh, lasting relationships outside of that because I've met people all over the world um, through that experience. And because that experience opened my mind to um, allowing myself to put myself out there and accept others in a way that I, I wouldn't have been so receptive to um, before that trip. So my first trip to Kakaha, uh, to to Japan, I visited Kyoto and Japan or Kyoto and Tokyo. Um, I'm working out the kinks on this guy. Sorry. So any suggestions? Feel free to to leave them uh, in the remarks or comments. But went to Kyoto and Tokyo, and the stop that meant the most to me in Kyoto now certainly was our uh, visit to Kyoto Senga University where I returned yesterday for the first time in three years to walk the campus, um, see a, the Zen garden that I took photos with Ko and Adrian who is one of my fellow uh, USF uh, ex-students, uh, former students I guess, he's not you know in bad standing. Um, but. I recreated that photo of me and Co. three years on, uh, and to look at it as a comparison to where we both have have come and, and the things we've achieved and learned uh, was like a really touching moment. Um, but while I was there, uh, multiple friends were graduating, but then others showed up in support. So I saw some of these kids for the first time in two years. Uh, Takuya. Um, Ayaka, Mao, they all were there either graduating or, or there in support. So that was really amazing. So it really was like a, a, a homecoming and, and being able to see my family again was a really moving experience. And I, you know, I wouldn't take it back for the world to spend my first day in Japan surrounded by family in, and having moments that still to this day, uh, to, to this minute, like, feel unreal, you know? Like, they feel like a dream. Uh, it's, it's really hard to kind of, like, fully articulate into words, but, I, you know, I certainly will try my best. Um, then I took my second trip last year um, by myself. First time I'd ever been out of the country on my own. I traveled all over Japan at that point. I saw Hiroshima, which uh, if you know, I've, I've made a film about my experiences and, and shared that to as many people as possible. And I, I certainly would appreciate and, and hope that if you see it and you're moved by it or you learn something from it, by all means, please pass it on. I just want people to understand the, the message of Hiroshima. And I think the, the overall message of that film is, um, you know, to love one another, to accept one another, to seek peace and understanding and to try and just leave a positive mark in any way possible 
shape or form that you can uh, because you know we we don't have a ton of time on this planet and I think we need to make the most of, of every minute that we get and so if we can leave a positive mark for the future um, you know maybe they they lead by example and hopefully that uh, that rings true in my sentiments um, so I saw Hiroshima I saw Osaka for the first time, I saw Kobe, I saw Hikone, I saw Shiga, I saw Kawase. All these places, uh, friends from all over the country, you know, my family's kind of spread out here. So it got me out of my comfort zone, but it also made me feel much more acclimated into learning the train systems, uh, utilizing the language that I know, um, winging it, getting lost, and enjoying the times that you, you don't know where you're going and you're unsure where you're going, but it's an adventure nonetheless. Those moments still are deeply, deeply um, etched onto my heart and my brain, and I, I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about them or, or experience some feeling of, of love and emotion from them. Uh, so, which brings me to today. Um, the second day of my trip, I will shortly take a shower, get ready, and head back to Kyoto Sangyo to see a bunch of other friends graduate. And after that, I'm not quite sure what the day will bring. Um, you know, I, I have loose plans other than um, seeing friends graduate at this point today. And then I guess I can just do whatever. But I did want to kind of touch on a few points. So. So last night during, um, or yesterday during the graduation, um, not only was I catching up with all these people, but of course they wanted to know what I'd been up to, uh, you know, how long I was going to be there. They wanted to know what my plans were. I think a lot of people understand that I'm doing my best to make Japan my permanent home. Uh, I think that the country has called to me since I came here the first time, but I also really felt that on my second trip last year and so this year is kind of me not just seeing friends and visiting <coughs> oh my gosh that's so unprofessional I'm sorry I have like no editing software um, so again if you guys have an idea of what I can do to to do that by all means let me know um, <laughs> like I said I'm working out the kinks but um, I spent a great deal of time speaking in some Japanese because my it's it's starting to come back to me um, you, you just kind of have to immerse yourself in it and then you'll you'll kind of start to pick it back up but explain myself in a way that I think would help as a as an English teacher like slowing my speech explaining words um, choosing them carefully um, all things I think that will translate to to teaching English so that you know I can get a visa and then I can kind of chase my dream and, and become involved in the LGBTQ community or uh, become involved in some type of other like humanitarian type efforts like anti-nuclear um, uh, organizations uh, across Japan because it's something I'm really passionate about after you know visiting Hiroshima and um, after obviously you know the the devastation that happened in Fukushima those are both two things that are like really close to me so I would like to become involved in some sort of works with those type of organizations uh, in the long term here because they just they're some they're my passion right now um, the other thing that was really amazing was as we traveled as a group as we kind of dispersed from Kyoto Sangyo and I, I got caught up with people and we took tons of photos and we, you know, I shared my congratulations with them because I am, I'm very proud of all of my Kakashi family, all the ones that have graduated, all the ones that graduated yesterday and today. And there's three more kids that will be graduating next year. But it's crazy to think I met a lot of these, these guys when they were, you know, 18, 19 years old. So in a way I've, I've watched them grow up. And, I mean, that's a really proud feeling to, to watch everybody become successful and to chase their dreams and succeed. So for me to be able to be a part of, of this for them was really amazing and very moving. And it was, it was hard to keep uh, 
a dry eye yesterday um, because of all the, the enjoyment and excitement I had and, and the love that, that was just kind of like surrounding our group. But we ended up going to uh, Uniqlo later as a group, a couple of us, and then we all got back together and um, did Shabu Shabu, which is where you kind of like cook everything in a hot pot. And they were really accommodating for me because you know, I'm vegetarian vegan. So they got my, my own separate pot and they would make sure I got all the veggies. And uh, yeah, I mean, that to me, like I come here first time in a year and they know my diet, they are respectful of my diet, and they they don't have to do that. I mean, I've, I've been willing to bend because I understand that it is my choice to be vegan. It is also my choice to um, abstain from alcohol. And yet they not once allowed it or were willing to let it hinder spending time with me. I mean, they made so many... Um, like so many, so many sacrifices, I think, to, to, to make me feel like one of them. That, to me, that brings me to the big point of family, which is what I really want to talk about. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll always see me kind of sharing this hashtag, um, Kazuku, which is family. And it kind of stems a little bit from the, uh, the LGBTQ community's idea of like family of choice. So a family of choice is basically the family that you choose that is not necessarily blood or genetically related to you. And because in the LGBTQ community, it is fairly common um, in, in, a, in a fairly disgraceful way that families abandon um, you know, queer identity uh, individuals and kind of cast them out that they find and gravitate and cling to people that are much like them or are supportive of them and who they are. Uh, that is not to say that my, you know, my genetic DNA blood related family is not supportive of me, but in a broader sense, I think everybody that is in my orbit and my relationality in some way, shape or form, the, uh, the, the, emotional ties, the emotional investment I have in everyone is the same as those people. So the love that I share for my, my own family and my own brothers by blood and my mother, it is the same love that I share for my friends that live in Japan. So for me, that, that is my kazuku. They are my family and I have family everywhere. Um, but for me here, it makes spending time here and, and trying to transition my life to be here much easier because I have that support system. So in, I think, I guess the biggest sense for me, it's like coming home and there is this feeling that because we're so close and we're so intertwined and, and emotionally connected to one another, um, that there is this sense that no time gets lost. I mean, no matter how long it's been, we are always so receptive to, to seeing one another and, and spending time with one another and just being around each other. I mean, I think I, I smiled and laughed more yesterday than I had in, in probably a couple months. Although, probably I, I went to the Ren Fair with my, my brother Robert and, and his you know, beautiful wife Marin and my friend Rachel and like we laughed a ton and my cheeks hurt that day too. But but um yeah, I mean I think that goes to show that the investment, the attachment, um there's just something so intrinsically there for for all of us as as Kakahashi members as a as a core group of individuals that share this bond three years on and and, and strong um, that really speaks to what the Kakahashi project was meant to do and that was to build a bridge and I think that every time we meet not just me as a member or not just them but every time some of us from America 
come to Japan or they come to America. Every time we meet, every time we spend time together, we are just reinforcing that bond. And all of them were in agreement when I said that. I think that we all are very cognizant of the uh, the unique opportunity that it allowed us and the greater um, I think the the greater outlook the, the the bigger picture of what the Kakahashi project was supposed to do it wasn't just to show kids Tokyo Tokyo and Kyoto it wasn't just to show kids LA and, and Tampa and, and Seattle or Portland it was it was meant to create this family. It was meant to create a connection through human interaction. And so every time we do that, we continue to keep that connection strong and, and build it so that nothing can tear it apart. You know, not work schedules, not, you know, thousands of miles, not time zones, not language, not color, ethnicity, race, gender, sex, none of it. You know, it, it all doesn't matter. Um, and that was something I think that the sentiments rang true from, from everybody. Everybody had the same idea that the Kakashi Project meant a lot to them because without it, they wouldn't have built the, the foundation and the family that we all have now. So that to me is, I think, a, a true testament to the, the project itself. And to be a part of that, having been a part of that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely honored. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that anybody wouldn't, you know, um, regardless of how you view it, maybe some, you know, maybe some people just think it's cool to, to take a free trip to Japan or whatever, but I think the, the people that got the most out of it are the ones that we continue to just, like, invest that time, invest that emotional, um, uh, emotional attachment and, and that that time to just check in, you know, from across the world and, and make sure everything's okay. Uh, you know, because I think at the, at the end of the day, it's all about love. You know, everybody loves one another. And so we, we just want to see the, the best for each other. However, they can, they can go about it. Um, let's see. So yeah, the, um, the, the other thing I want to touch on um, pretty quickly is that the way I feel, it was a little surprising, but not totally, to have that sentiment share, as I said, to go with my, my Kakahashi family and just walk through the streets of uh, Kawadamachi last night. There is this feeling for me... That, and for most travelers, I'm sure, in Japan, if they've never been, there is this moment of culture shock where you very much realize you are different. Um, and it it hangs over you a little. Um, it's usually probably reinforced through the language difference if you don't know any Japanese. Like, it's going to be a little tougher for you, and it's going to be a little bit more jarring at first because there is going to be that barrier. Now, if you have a slight grasp of the language... And it's pat like you know you have like passable phrases to get you around or things like that. It's a lot less taxing, um, but I don't know if that air ever goes away. And I think for me as a queer tattooed individual, there's a lot more layers than just I'm a six foot tall, you know, what appears to be white uh, American male. Like. And it's not that I, you know, I've, I've kind of portrayed other, you know, other identity uh, roles thus far other than having tattoos. Like, I've shown my tattoos once or twice. And because they cover my arm now, it's, it's a lot more noticeable. Um, so I have gotten a fair share of looks. But, you know, I mean, it, a lot of it's probably just it's curiosity. You know, here's a six-foot-tall tattooed individual. Like, what are they doing here? Um... But when I'm around the the kids from Kyoto, um, I mean, that goes away. I mean, I just, I was one of them, and I, I didn't think otherwise, you know. I 
I walked with them, we talked, we joked, we went everywhere as a group. I mean, it was like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like kind of being in your own little gang, I guess, and, and not a negative way, but I felt safe, I felt secure, I felt accepted, and all everything just kind of like washes away. Uh, I, I no longer become cognizant of, oh, I, I am different. Um, on a art, you know, on a, on a base kind of outside appearance level, sure, I'm different. But at the end of the day, we're all human. And I am going to do my best to get over this kind of like floating um, feeling and concept of like difference and, and uh, self-exclusion. Like I, I want to be a part of this culture so badly and be a part of this country so badly that to start that process I really need to shed any ideas of, of being different. You know, I need to utilize my language as much as possible. I need to um, go about my day in, uh, I think, a much more Japanese fashion. Um, or at least kind of just like pick, pick up on the, on the stream and the flow of, of, of traffic and life, you know. Uh, it is very different here, but at the same time, it's not that different, you know. Everybody's human. Everybody breathes oxygen. If I think everybody has similar goals and, and um, expectations and dreams and desires. Like, we all want to be happy. We all want love. We all want, at the heart of it, I think we all want everybody to be satisfied in life and to have a positive, good life. And... I am dedicated to to making that happen, not just for me, but for everyone. I think that my desires and my motivations to try and um, open people's eyes to um, people that are different in Japan, because there is still, I think, a, a slight stigma for... LGBTQ and, and of course tattoos have, have a negative connotation with a lot of the older generations but you know those are slowly dying away and they're being picked at and for me I've kind of taken it upon myself to be a I think I, I want to be a forebearer for um, making those changes I want to be a motivating factor and force in having people accept everyone for just being who they are, you know, it, it shouldn't be about being American, being Japanese, having tattoos or no tattoos, being queer or straight, being a woman or a man, you know, it should be about love, it should be about family, a human family, a family that, you know, spans thousands of miles and just a general desire to find um, the strength to help make the world a better place in, in any way, shape, or form I can. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the format of this will, will surely change, I think, but you know, I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this and listen to my meandering ramblings. Um, like I said, comment leave a leave any remarks questions by all means um you know I, I would be happy to to share in dialogue and and uh, exchange information as far as you know what, what you're curious about if you have questions on uh you know places i'm gonna see or some of the places i've been prior and some of the places i plan to go by all means i i really want to open this up to dialogue and and have everybody kind of express um, in a positive way, please, their ideas and their perceptions of um, me, of my experiences, and uh, express themselves and, and certainly ask questions of themselves uh, in relation to the world around them.
Um, so thank you guys, I appreciate it, and I will be seeing you soon with another one that will be treated a lot more professionally. I won't sneeze on camera, and uh, I'll have a little bit more structure, but thanks guys.